fans in a lot of ways. I know how they feel. They're great. They're loyal. They want to bang for their buck. Everybody, welcome to a very special episode of the Large Cast, and uh, we are here joined by Jake Heaps and Stacy Joe Rost, who's returning to the show uh, of the Jake and Stacy Show on Seven Ten ESPN Seattle. Uh, first of all, uh, Stacy, welcome back. We missed you. A long time no talk, you guys. I'm very excited. Uh, we're excited to reconnect with you, and, and you know. Have some fun uh, or poke some fun at the Seattle Seahawks, as you know, we like to do a lot. Oh, Ryan yeah, is guys not guys here like to, to save us. you. <laughs> <laughs> and then I will... Ryan's on my side. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We kicked him off for this one. No, I'm just kidding. You oh, couldn't no. make it. And then we're very happy to talk to your co-host here, Jake Heaps, who's also Russell Wilson's quarterback coach. Uh, very excited to talk to you about why, how Russell's played his last game in Seattle, but uh, we will get to that. How are you doing, Jake? Welcome to the show. <laughs> What's going on, guys? It's good to be here. Excited to join you. Uh, Stacy said this was going to be a blast, and I can already tell she delivered on that, which, uh, you know, sometimes you just never know with Stacy. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, let's just start with the dynamic that you guys have because I love those clips you guys share and how you, you kind of interact on social and the fun that you guys have with each other. I mean, I follow Stacy uh, and she's always sharing and ESPN 710 Seattle is always sharing some good, but hearty clips. Tell us about how that show came together and, and the dynamic you guys have with each other and, and why it's so successful. Uh, Stacy, yeah, you can start. I mean, or Jake, go ahead. Go ahead, Jake. There. Yeah, I mean, you know, the biggest thing, Stacy's all getting ready to have great things talked to, you know, said about her. She couldn't be further from the truth. But <laughs> I, I think that, you know, honestly, one of the cool things about uh, Stacy and I and, and our show is, is that her and I did not grow up in this industry. We did not grow up, um, you know, really aspiring to be, you know, sports broadcasters. It was something, honestly, in my career that you know, was a cool thought. Like maybe, maybe if I got done, I could be on TV. I'm seeing all these, you know, former athletes make that transition. Maybe it would be something cool, but I really fell in love with coaching and that's really what I got into. And I started my own business and then, um, and then just somehow, some way I got asked by Brock Hewitt to fill in for him on the morning show. And then I got hooked and I got roped into it and, and 710 kept bringing me back. And then that's when I ran into Stacy who, you know, uh, was at the time, she was a, a writer for the station. And, and, you know, they had this idea to, to put together a former athlete and a sports writer uh, who had a bunch of personality together and see if this thing could work, see if we could even make it in the mm -hmm. industry. And I think that's what made it fun for us was is that honestly, we take pride in what we do. We take pride in, you know, our job and, and delivering the best, uh, the best analysis and all that kind of stuff. But really, I think we kind of looked at each other and just said, hey, if we're going to go down, let's go down our way. Let's go down swinging. Mm -hmm. Let's go down unconventional. Let's have fun. Let's not take ourselves too seriously. And I think that uh, at the end of the day, we just want to be ourselves. And we're not trying to be be anybody that's you know, stuck up and, and mm -hmm. looking down on other people and, and, you know, Hey, we know more than everybody else. We're, mm -hmm. we're just trying to deliver our thoughts and our analysis and, and really embrace the side of it that we're just having fun. We just want to kick back, hang out and, and have fun with everybody. And, and so far it's worked out for us. Uh, I don't know if I missed anything, Stacy, but uh, you know, it's, it's really been fun. It's been a blast. No, yeah. Jake summed it up perfectly. And I, I think that, um, to his point about tone, one of my favorite things about our show, and I'll include uh, Curtis in here, who's our producer, but also our friend. The three of us are really good friends. And um, is uh, I'm sure something that you guys are familiar with, which is uh, just talking as though if no one was there, this is how we'd be talking to each mm. other. And yeah, you ham it up once in a while. Um, and uh, but, but for the most part, you're just kind of speaking in a way that feels natural. And I find that for Jake and myself, I'm speaking for Jake here, but I think this is true that for Jake and myself, not either aspiring to be sports radio hosts or coming from that background kind of lends itself to a more natural tone. Um, and it's not that people who, who are from that background don't sound natural. They, they quite often like jump right into it and know exactly what to do. Whereas we had a lot of, um, obstacles and, and, and learning curves, a lot of um, growing moments, that's for sure. a, lot of, a lot of growing pains. Uh, and so there's, there's, there's pros and cons to either, but I think for, I think for both of us, 
um, there wasn't someone uh, in the way that we thought, I want to sound exactly like this person because, you know, Jake's looking at it as he's, he's a former athlete. He's not jumping into it as, you know, someone mm -hmm. where he's looking at, um, you know, Mike Salk, who's our program director at the time is from a different background. And, and obviously for me, there aren't a ton of women in sports radio. So mm -hmm. neither of us had a tone of, I need to sound like this. We just kind of came in as ourselves. Mm -hmm. So you guys are completely opposite to us because TJ always tells us that he knows more than the rest of us. Get out of here. Show, right? <laughs> <laughs> so cool. I can't relate. I was, no. <laughs> was going to say Jake mentioned something that was important to me and Nav just takes it the other way. But no, I, I thought I thought you said something that was really important in comparison to this market here in Vancouver where there's obviously a heavy uh, Canucks coverage. Um, um, I think not talking down to your listeners uh, I think that's very important. And honestly, uh, that probably is, is why it encapsulates more listeners and just to kind of people feel like they're just having a casual conversation when they listen to your show. And I, that's probably one of the biggest takeaways from what you just said there, because it's a, it's a it's a kind of a night and day difference sometimes when you when you hear people talk about the Canucks, for example, here in this market. So I like mm -hmm. that. I like that a lot. <laughs> Yeah, that doesn't mean that we don't get on our listeners and when they yeah. talk crazy and they talk ridiculous that we don't call them out for it. But I hope I hope, you know, it's received as, you know, when you have a friend that's just talking crazy and you're like, come on, man, like, yeah, you know, what, are you, what are you talking about? We, you know, we yeah. had uh, we, we love Ralph uh, from Bellevue. He's from Crossroads uh, in Washington. I knew you'd say he, him. He called our show and said that Gino Shout Smith was going to show everyone that uh, he was going to be the MVP of the league, that he was being held back. He's going to show he was Kyler Wilson. He's gonna he said he's going to be Kyler Murray. Oh, my and God. He, yeah. And so, you know, on Monday, I came in and said, hey, you know, you saw it. <laughs> didn't look anything like that and what are you people thinking right so um you know i i think that that part of it is it comes down to trust it comes down to yeah. from the jump who do you want to be and what do you want to be about and i think mm -hmm. there's a way to have a intellectual uh conversation a way to approach the audience <clears throat> while being welcoming and yeah. welcoming everybody mm -hmm. in and, and stacy really opened my eyes to this to be honest it's always the approach that i wanted to have in general it's just kind of who I am in, yeah. uh, as, as a person, but, you know, Stacy coming from her background of not growing up in sports and, yeah. and, and being someone that found a love for sports, mm -hmm. you know, kind of later in life. Uh, I don't mean that as Stacy is 80 years old, and <laughs> <it's really laughs> um, but, but, you know, she found a passion for it later yeah. on and she got to college yeah. and, and, and professionally mm -hmm. and all that. And nobody works harder than Stacy. Mm -hmm. Um, and part of that is because she's had to, but the other part is, you know, it, it's, it's endearing to know that there are fans that might be jumping in for the first time into sports radio. And, they're and they're they fans that are her, just yeah. coming yeah. into this yeah. on Twitter and they're excited and they're, you know, and sometimes they're going to have opinions that you disagree with, but, uh, being more welcoming into that space and wanting people to join the conversation rather than, you know, trying to tell everybody how smart you are. I think there's a lot of, um, insecurity in that so to speak yeah can i tap on to that that there's go something ahead go about, ahead yeah. yeah there's something that i love about having those conversations first of all you don't have to be a former athlete to be able to talk about sports right not at obviously all. Yeah. not at all um but one thing i do love is when former athletes who have been around been around it don't feel the need to like show off because they're able to simplify it and they like, so my, one of my favorite things about both Jake and uh, our colleague, Dave Wyman is they've both been around sports their entire lives. And not only that, but have been in and around the game and know complicated things mm -hmm. and infinitely more than, than anyone else. And, uh, and they'll break it down and they'll be like, oh, that doesn't mean anything. Or they'll be like, oh yeah, well, that just means this. And, and I feel like sometimes there's like this, this one-up contest in sports that, that happens. It's just like, even within coverage of it, it gets kind of competitive and it makes you feel sometimes if you're new to it, like Jake pointed out on the outside, like you feel mm. like, oh, I'm stupid. I don't quite get that. Oh, yeah. I'm so dumb. I shouldn't chime up, chime in about it. And, and Jake and Wyman are both great about being like, okay, so what happens is when you're here and, and they, it's kind of not level the playing it field it's, a bit. It's leveling the playing field, and I love that. Yeah. Well, it's funny that you guys are so complimentary to each other right now because I did ask you guys to send five things about each other that maybe the listeners or people don't know, and it wasn't really complimentary, but we're going to get there. <laughs> well, there is you know, a little bit a little different, but anyways, I like that dynamic you guys just shared. It shows that there's real love there. Now, before we get to that fun stuff later, Nav, 
Let's just go ahead and ask that question. Let's, 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 get with, let's get with ready with the heat. So me and TJ are honestly, we're the exceptions to the rule in, you know, in BC, at least where we live is most of the province are Seahawk fans. They love the Seahawks. All my buddies, cousins, they're diehard Seahawk fans. So I made a prediction the other day to TJ and I'm like, I think Russell Wilson has played his last game as a Seahawk. So what I want to know from both of you, you know, either one you can take is, is there going to be a point in the season where the Seahawks are so far out of it just because the division that they're in and they're already two and four, that they just shut him down and perhaps next year where there's already rumors flying that he may not come back. So is Russell Wilson done in Seattle? So Jake, Stacey, either one of you can take well, it Stacey, first. Stacey, go, like Stacey oh, goes go first because okay. I want to hear, I want to ask Jake a follow-up because because of yeah. his ties directly yeah. to Russell. But, uh, yeah. No, I, I don't think so. I think um, I, I really, Pete Carroll was one of the last coaches to even sit starters in the preseason. Uh, so while I think that it's certainly possible that Russell Wilson might be in his last season with Seattle, like I haven't ruled that out. Um, I don't think that even if they lose their next four, that they just shut them down or that at any point in the season, they shut them down. I don't think it's in uh, Russell Wilson's nature. And I also don't think it's in Pete Carroll's nature. They're both um, pretty uh, similar in their will to win and kind of their stubbornness sometimes. So I, I cannot see them just shutting him down. Uh, yeah. It, so sometimes I have to uh, make sure I separate church uh, from state. Here. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, we're going to push you though. <laughs> with Russ and some people, we, you know, Jay, you're not on your truth. show though. Don't forget. You're not. <laughs> we, you're give not us, give us the truth. Give <laughs> yeah. us the truth. You no contractual obligations here, Jay. Come on. <laughs> that's right. That's right. You know, sometimes people assume that I'm speaking, you know, for Russell in a lot of ways. And, and there are times that I, you know, I know, I know things very intimately in terms of, you know, his contract negotiations um and, and things of those uh, of that nature and and all that but you know honestly when it comes to this I think it's extremely unpredictable I think it would be foolish to sit here and say that yeah it's a done deal and nothing's gonna happen because you know quite frankly you don't know what they're thinking as an organization either right I mean mm, yeah. the way I view this organization right now and and you know we kind of talked about it on our show today is that you might come to the realization and you might be in denial or have been in denial for years because of the possibilities of the greats, the, the, the stars that you have on their team, if they play well and they play up to their potential, they're Super Bowl team. They're, they're Super Bowl caliber players on this mm. roster, but they don't have a competitive roster from top to bottom that no. makes them a legitimate Super Bowl contender year in and year out. They're a playoff contender. Mm -hmm. And so when you're, you're spinning your tires in the mud and you're doing this for multiple years and then – you know, you, you have difficult conversations and difficult things happen this last off season, you know, it, it, it sparks some conversation. It sparks change in thought possibly. And, you know, I'll say this from, you know, that perspective, who knows if Pete Carroll and John Schneider look at this at the end and say, gosh, we're stuck in the mud and there's no way for us to improve. And mm -hmm. the only way for us to do that is to make some drastic decisions. You know, Russell Wilson could look at this and say, I don't know, the direction of our organization right now and therefore i want to go or there's also the very real possibility that they catch fire when russell comes back all is well and the optimism is extremely high and through the roof that they can be a better team this next you know next season or they make the playoffs this year like i think that we're at a pretty close point that we're going to get those answers here pretty soon but we're not quite there yet. And, okay. and, and Stacy and I really think that this next game, the Saints game, is really that game that you're going to point to and say, this is a real defining moment well, that's why for I picked the up franchise. The Saints, that's why yeah. I picked up the Saints defense this year, because I think I know which way it's going to go. <laughs> this oh, week, man. Saints defense is going to kill them. All right, well, hold on. I got one, let me, let me, yeah, let me ask one up. question. Okay, go, go, ahead, go, 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 go. go. Well, you know, you mentioned, you mentioned Gino, right? And I have a bit of a soft spot for the poor kid, right? Like he hasn't played in like how many years basically. And he hasn't looked that bad until the last couple minutes where he always seems to lose the ball and whatever, but well, Tyler Lockett he, slipped on him. Come on. He's, no, no, but that fair enough. But I mean, like I was watching that game, even in the third or fourth quarter and they were running the ball, running the ball, running the ball. But at some point, do you not think that they should actually like give him an opportunity to run with it a little bit, like throw the ball, like use his attributes that he's good at instead of just when you keep running the ball, you're almost telling him like, listen, you're not good enough. So mentally, yeah. I'm thinking Gino's probably thinking like, well, they don't trust me. So he's got no confidence anyway. He probably doesn't have any confidence coming into the game, but it probably got worse throughout the game. Like, okay, we ran the ball like, what, 10, 12 times in a row to get a touchdown. They'd refuse to let him throw the ball. So, I mean, at some point, you got to let Pete Carroll 
got to decide like, hey, listen, this is my guy for the next two, three, four weeks. Let's give him some confidence, right? I mean, I don't know. Like you, you would think you would think that way, but in Pete Carroll's mind, the, the way that he wants to go is he wants to say that, hey, I'm going to infuse confidence in my offensive line. I'm going to infuse confidence in our running game because that's my <laughs> philosophical belief. The only person yeah. that's really made made me think otherwise has been Russell Wilson, has pushed back mm-hmm. on me a little bit in that aspect. And so I think that when it comes to Geno Smith and that conversation, I agree with you. Geno Smith is more than capable of, of you know, trusting him um, and allowing him to, um, you know, throw the ball. That doesn't mean I, I, I want them and believe that he can do the same things and have the same pressure on him that Russell Wilson obviously can take. That's not it at all, but there does need to be that element of balance. And you might find yourself looking at the Saints game as the perfect example of that. Pete Carroll has declared to the world, to the world, what their intentions are on Monday night. That is to run the football and to do it often and to cram it down their throw no matter what. The Saints are the second best run defense in the league. So we'll see if they can, you know, they're they're making no bones about it. We'll see if the Saints, uh, you know, shut them down and then what? So I, I think that you're going to you're going to see to that follow up question, kind of some of the some of the fallacies of that plan. If you're if you're taking Geno Smith's confidence away or not allowing him to be have a major role within the offense. I think all of that is very, very real. Uh, Stacey, let me ask you something uh, uh, based off of what Jake said earlier, how <clears throat> this this team is more of like competing for the playoffs and not really competing mm, for a Super mm-hmm. Bowl. In your mind, what does this team lack? in terms of being a Super Bowl contender, uh, top to bottom? Uh, I think just, I mean, I want to say depth, but sometimes that doesn't really matter. Like you could argue that uh, there are many teams in the league. I mean, Green Bay might be one of them that at certain positions don't have a ton of depth, but they have a superstar there, so it doesn't matter. Um, And I think that with Seattle, they have some superstars that haven't been performing. So that's one of the problems, right? Is you have Bobby Wagner, who is a Hall of Famer, has he been playing like one completely every time this year? I don't think so. Like, I think there have been some times when maybe he's Same making up for Adams. mistakes. Same with Jamal Adams. Like saying that these guys, <clears throat> saying that these guys haven't been performing up to their own standard is not the same as saying that they aren't incredibly talented, but it's the truth. Um, and so they have superstars at positions that just haven't been already hitting. And then not only that, but they don't have um, cheap stars like I really do think that like some sometimes with those Super Bowl teams like it's one of two ways you uh maybe you're the Rams you sell out you trade first round picks you get all these guys uh or you tap into free agency and preferably don't overspend but you find guys that end up uh taking off and then the third option is you are bad enough uh that in one or year or two years because you're far below 500 you can hit in the draft and get someone great so like what makes the 49ers a Super Bowl team? One of the first people you would have talked about is uh, Nick Bosa, mm-hmm. right? You, that defensive line. Well, that's that's a defensive line full of first rounders that they had because they mm-hmm. were fourth in the division for so long. Mm-hmm. The Seahawks don't want to do that, and that's fine. Um, but they haven't been able to capitalize on that talent. And then I'll, I'll tack on, lastly, that um, a team similarly that wasn't ever getting a, a top 10 pick was New England, but New England was able to capitalize on Brady and and Seattle hasn't been able to capitalize with Wilson. So it's kind of been this weird double-edged sword of like, Hey, you get the best thing that every team wants, but you got to make the most of it because otherwise you're not going to get these other shots. Any of these rumors with Cam Newton, like what's going on there? We keep hearing these things that Cam's obviously now he's finally come out on Twitter online and said, I'm vaccinated and ready to go. I mean, can he, if he came in, let's just say, would he help this team more than Gino's helping this team while Russell Wilson's out? Jake? No. no, no, he would Jake not. Doesn't think I mean, so. I think he might. In, 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 in an extended period of time, I think yeah. it could work out. Yeah. And if Pete yeah. Carroll, and, and let's just throw this scenario out there. If, <clears throat> if we knew, if we knew today that Russell Wilson was going to be out two months and Pete mm-hmm. Carroll wants to run the football, Cam Newton might be a great option because mm-hmm. Cam Newton can run the football. Cam Newton can do some unique things that mm-hmm. you could do the zone read with him legitimately. You can add some quarterback runs into what they're doing and it could be more of a dynamic running attack truly but mm. the the truth is is that cam newton's shoulder is not the same cam newton no is not the same quarterback and so 
you know, what role and what scenario are we talking here? Because in a couple weeks, while you're trying to buy some time to get Russell Wilson back, Geno Smith's your best option. You don't need to go down that down that road with Cam and try to get him up to speed with this offense. I just don't think it's a recipe for success, and I don't think it's worth all the craziness that would ensue. Not not off the field. I'm talking on the field, the prep to get him ready to go. Yeah, yeah. And and all that. I just don't think it would be worth it. And quite frankly, I don't think Cam would waste his time. I don't think he's there to 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 go into any situation just to be there a couple weeks. Okay. But I think I agree with you. And I know Nav wanted to ask that question, but Cam's also a, I mean, let's just be honest, he's a bit of a distraction too at this point. Um mm-hmm. he could just comes with too much media attention uh outside the market more than you'd like to see for a team that's focused you know, in-house and whatnot. But anyways, I want to take it back to one thing. I know Nav had a follow-up, but I wanted to ask you about Russell. One last thing I wanted to ask you. This off-season was obviously well-documented, right? Mm -hmm. And after everything, after the dust settled, you know, he was back, he was training with the team and and committed to the team and and everything was, you know, all all, uh, good and and whatnot. But I want to ask you, like, specifically, in whatever you can say or speak to, in regards to Russell's actual anger with the uh, the lack of commitment to the offensive line and how he's been the most sacked quarterback almost his entire career, like how pissed off was he? I know Russell's not the type of guy to blow up. You know, he's very he's probably got he's very composed in his mm-hmm. nature to stay that way. But just talk us or talk to us about the actual frustration that he had with the l- the lack of commitment to him and the investment mm-hmm. in him. Yeah, I, I think a lot of it got overblown, and part of it is his own fault in terms of not being clearer in how he said it. You could tell when he had that conversation, it's like, do I dip my toe in this water right now? All right, I'm going for it, you know, and, and it didn't come out quite the way that I think that he would have liked to have articulated if he could have run run it back, but honestly, I, he, he wasn't wrong in anything that he said in the sense that there were two opportunities moving forward into this offseason to improve on the offensive line, center and guard. And you would like to see from an offensive perspective, from an elite quarterback, that the franchise is going to do what they can to make improvements, legitimate improvements to the offensive line so that they can be dynamic. And if you're going to put this on the offense, and you're going to say, hey, Russell Wilson, $35 million, and this is an offensive-driven team, and it, it, it's, it's on you to take us to the promised land. All right, well, then let's, let's invest the resources to make that happen. And, oh, by the way, give me what every other elite quarterback in this league has been given without question, which is elite protection. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. this had come from, you know, uh, years and years of dealing with below – like not even below average we're talking about some of the worst in the league in terms of offensive line play and so this wasn't a personal shot at anybody on that offensive line or anybody that's played for him over the years he loves those guys he's just trying to protect Um, his body come on (laughs) it's part of it's part of that but it's also okay we haven't changed our approach to the offseason in five years six years Mm -hmm. and again that same thing i talked about just spinning our tires in the mud And where's going to be the change of approach? Where's going to be the difference? And how are we going to get there? And I think that ultimately frustration comes out, one, as you're sitting there watching the Super Bowl unfold before your eyes when you are – I mean, guys, I don't think you understand how competitive Russell is, but how much he puts into this game. I mean, Mm -hmm. this guy is up – I kid you not. I know some people – like. I've done it myself. Hey, I, I gained 15 pounds this off season. I worked out so hard and really I gained 10 and I felt pretty good about it, but Hey, I'm going to add five more pounds. Like Russell Wilson gets up at four 30 in the morning, every single morning. And it's, it, he's dedicated by the minute to what he's going to do. Like wow. that's how passionate he is about this. And, and some, you know, like the whole thing, the pre the pregame deal, everybody's making fun of them. And, and I get it. It looks, it, it looks r- ridiculous, <laughs> right? It looks like it's a show. Was it but even that, legal? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we don't need to talk about that. We don't need to get into the details, but that's who he is guys. That's, that's who he is. 1000%. And mm-hmm. he believes in that moment that that pregame ritual is like the key to his success, to keep him sharp, to keep him focused. And he's going to do it with 100% commitment. So if he's doing that every single day, he wants to know that 
that they are doing everything that they can. And that's a silly thing to say. Of course they want to win. But what are we doing to change? What are we doing to improve? And am I hearing the same answers that I've heard for years? And yeah. I think that that's ultimately where it kind of came down to. And yeah. and um and 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 so that's that's how it all came about. I, I think reading so, between the lines, you need friction. I think reading between the lines, what you're saying for this off season coming up is if they're still stuck in the mud. Bye bye, Russ. But anyways, anyways, we'll and we'll stop the Russ stuff now. We'll give you a no. I, I got I got one okay, follow, quick follow up to Stacy. Uh, you know okay, Stacy. As a Jersey will show, I love Aaron Rodgers. Love the Green Bay Packers. Yes, see. two superstar, two superstar quarterbacks, both in a similar situation. Who handled the offseason better, Stacy? Wilson didn't come out and say, "Hey, I want out." He said, "Yeah, I want these changes. I need some help. You know, if you need to trade me, these are the teams I would go to." Whereas Aaron Rodgers straight up, even in a press conference when he showed up to training camp, said, mm -hmm. these are the issues I have. One, two, three, four. That's why I want out. So who handled the offseason better? Who was more professional? And which way do you think was a better way to go? I think, uh, yeah, it is. I think, uh, here's the thing. I think Wilson did on paper, hmm. but the way that uh, both men's comments were embraced was wildly different. Hmm. And that's, it, it. part of it is because Aaron Rodgers had over... Uh, maybe not throughout his career, but certainly the last couple seasons. And it starts with like that Seth Wickersham article, but then there's other stuff. He's kind of established himself as like, look, I'm Aaron Rodgers. Like what I say goes, I got no. McCarthy out of here. I'll get someone else out of <laughs> here too. And so he's kind of established himself as like, I'm the boss around here. Deal with it. And, and Green Bay loves him. And uh, he doesn't and mind Russell being the villain. No, he doesn't at all. And people have no. kind of let him do that. Like he's done like a little bit of a heel turn where it's like, he's kind of embraced it. Mm. Um, and I think people are fine with this level of kind of like pretentiousness that he almost makes likable in a way. He's like the rock, he's Some like the rock when it. he became heel, still, yeah. still beloved by everybody. Right. <laughs> right. Some yeah. people don't like it, but I'm like, you know what? I feel like it makes sense. It fits. So when he said those things and when he was doing that, like if, if over half the other quarterbacks in the league do that, I would say most other quarterbacks in the league, people are going to be like, what is this guy doing? What a jerk. Mm -hmm. um, and then with Russell Wilson, really all he said were those comments. Like that's really all he said. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but he had had this very clean image leading up to that, that, that people who were already questioning, like, is Russ getting a little too Hollywood just were very quick to pounce and think he was being very selfish. Okay. So we'll uh, let's ask one last division question real quick. I just want to hear your thoughts on uh, a two, who, two things. One, who do you think is going to win the division? Um, and uh, two, are the Arizona Cardinals being disrespected still? Oh, man. Uh, okay, so it's going to answer both of those questions in my answer right here. But I will say, number one, the Arizona Cardinals 100% are being disrespected right now. What they've done is for real. Um, and it's been very, very impressive. Uh, as I told Stacy, the Browns game is something that I'm definitely looking at. Um, I'm, I'm more so looking towards that green Bay game, but, uh, if miles Garrett had played and they did what they did, I'd be like, okay, th this is, this is a no brainer. The fact that he was out doesn't mean that they weren't a good defense, but, um, I, I think obviously that guy is incredible. Mm -hmm. Um, so you didn't get the Browns at full strength necessarily, but they did a great job uh, with Cliff Kingsbury out. But even with that being said, there's something about this group that I don't trust. And I think a big part of it is Cliff Kingsbury for me. I just, until he proves it, I just have a hard time believing in Cliff Kingsbury. There's a lot that I like on the roster, mm -hmm. but Cliff's got to prove it. He hasn't been that guy in his career. He hasn't gotten this team through the tough moments. And that's not to say he can't, he just hasn't, he mm -hmm. hasn't done it before. Mm -hmm. And there's something to that. Whereas I believe that ultimately the Rams are going to be the team that win the division. They figure out some of the defensive issues that they currently have. And quite frankly, their offense is really, really good and dynamic. And they've been there before, even with Matthew Stafford, not being a part of it. I trust Sean McVay way more than I do Cliff Kingsbury. But how close <laughs> is that like call that you're making? Is it like, is it definitive? You believe it? Or you think that it it's going to come I, down to the wire last couple of games, maybe the last <laughs> week of the season. I believe it now, but okay. let's say if Arizona goes out there and completely controls the game against green Bay and, and takes it to them, I'm probably going to change my answer. Okay. So that, that's where I'm at right now. Stacy, what do you think? 
I'm going Arizona winning the division. I, I do think they're being disrespected. And I think if you had, it's that same thing. If you had Sean McVay leading this exact same Arizona Cardinals team, they'd be a Super Bowl favorite. I think a lot of it is Cliff Kingsbury was entering the season on the hot seat. And so mm. people are like, well, is this you or is it your players just finding something and maybe they'll get injured Mm -hmm. Um, and also having some older players that people had written off. Right. Uh, But yeah, I think, I think it's the Cardinals division to lose right now, not just because of the record, but I have some serious questions about the Rams defense. Like what? Uh, Like, I mean, the drop-off this year has been uh, pretty notable. I think they've let some explosive plays go. Um, Obviously uh, Aaron Donald's still phenomenal. Ramsey's still phenomenal, but they've had more questions with their secondary Mm. uh, than they did last year. And I don't think that their front seven has been great enough to make up for it. Yeah. You've seen some teams still take advantage of the the deep throws and and Mm -hmm. mid throws. Yeah. Uh, But anyways, great, great football talk there. We're going to switch it a little bit here as we wrap up. I really appreciate all the insights though, Jake and Stacy. Uh, Stacy, we're used to hearing your wonderful insights almost every week when we were on, on uh, the show radio there, but uh, Jake, first time having you on, uh, really appreciate everything that you were able to say. And, and <laughs> uh, even the way you weren't able to say certain things, but we could read between the lines, I think personally, but <laughs> take them for what you will. But I'm yeah, trying to get your body language well on that one right now. <laughs> are, are, are you tell, hold up. Are we saying Russell Wilson is going to be a green Bay Packer next year? Is that what you're telling me? They're going to switch. They're going to switch. <laughs> They're going to switch. <laughs> you know, if I, if I, I Jason Lacaforna uh, actually said that uh, today in an article, and I saw that, and I was like, okay, we, we're, we're at the most ridiculous level possible in this conversation right now. Makes zero sense. There's no way that happens. Also, like, but, Pete hey. and John – yeah, Pete and John being like, we're so tired of a quarterback with his own opinion. Let's get Aaron Rodgers in here. <laughs> like, that's not going to go over. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's have some fun as we wrap this show up. Um, I asked each of you guys uh, uh, individually to send five things about the other person that you think people don't know about them. Five things. Okay. Now, okay. I'm not going to, I'm just going to leave it like that and have you guys guess because beyond the five that I'll share, we might get some more out of this, right? So, <laughs> so, <Like fishing. laughs> so, uh, okay. So whoever wants to go first, maybe ladies first, right? We'll be gentlemen here. Okay. So, so, um, so Stacy, what do you think Jake said? Oh, by the way, the first, so first to oh, whoever gets the most points, we'll go five rounds. Whoever gets the most points is going to get a prize. And that prize is going to be uh, a t-shirt of either Aaron Rodgers or Drew Brees. Cause you know, <laughs> Nice. We nice. Like the great. Seahawks. Great, great. <laughs> we'll send you a large um, cast hat too. So what is what, what is the first thing you think Jake said about you that people don't know? I think he probably made fun of my food opinions and said, I have horrible taste in food or something like that. I'm going to give you a point. He said, uh, you punish yourself with horrifically healthy food. Yes. Point for Stacy. Exactly. Ding. Okay. Yes. Jake, <laughs> what is one thing <laughs> Stacy said about you that you think uh, people don't know? uh whew, that i don't know um that you think pe- the other online. people don't know about you that one thing that she said mm-hmm. maybe maybe that i yell a lot is that one everyone knows that <laughs> no eh, everyone nope. can hear that every one day. nothing stacy one nothing stacy okay oh, i'm crushing this round two stacy uh, go ahead i am assuming that he wrote that i am a double major i brag about it a lot nope that's Dang not one it. of them <laughs> Nope. Dang it. Jake. Everyone's very well aware of that. Um, Everyone in the office, like sales staff. Did I mention I'm a double major? Let's see. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think. Um, how Maybe about, something that goes against your image. That goes against my image. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's probably accurate. <laughs> it goes against my image. Uh, every now and then I can I can be known to give in a, a, a little dig here or there to Stacy. Um, no, I think it'd be You're too soft so to each other. You got, yeah, it's you it's to really like, what, like Stacy said, it's something that, you know, obviously she knows about you, but other people don't cause it's gonna, it's something that you don't like to share, but you're going to have to competitive for this, but I have no clue. Okay. Um, okay. All right. So it's still one nothing Stacy after two rounds, three rounds left okay. Stacy round that, three. Go that, ahead. that people. Okay. So if he was pretty mean that people might not know, uh, he might say I work in sports, but have no athletic talent and can't throw or catch a ball. Uh, no, <laughs> just going through here. No, that wasn't one of them. But it's so very, it's very true. Owned. That was a self goal and not even a yeah, point. You're there. just promoting yourself now. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jeez. the opposite uh, of that, I mean. <laughs> Jake, Jake, I'll give you a hint for yours. It's something that you did 
in the past. Yes, that's a good hint. Something that I did in the past. Oh, yeah. um, are you talking about my 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 suspension? For yes. School? Nice. You got nice. suspended once for making a counterfeit parking pass in high school. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yep. A counterfeit parking pass. That's pretty smart. I like that actually. Yeah. It's almost. It, was, as, it, it worked out great until I got caught. It was. Yeah. It was phenomenal. Not as, not as, uh, I mean, that was more clever than, uh, cause well, you still got caught. So not as, cl- not, not clever at all. We were talking about Evander Kane who was making the fake vaccine pass. Did you hear about that? Uh, no, I didn't no. Hear that. Evander Kane in the NHL made a fa- fake vaccine pass and he got suspended 21 games for that. So wow. <laughs> the, fu- wow. the funniest part about that is he's a, he's a very, like, like he's been well documented to be having a gambling addiction. Yeah. So, so the NHL gave him 21 games to get that. So uh, <laughs> that's pretty no. funny. Blackjack. that's awesome <laughs> all right uh <laughs> round four stacy so you're still uh, up oh, it's one one now it's one okay, one can i get a hint yeah okay jake give her a hint um okay this is a conspiracy that you have in terms of the office being against you oh i think that <laughs> i think that people are putting soap in the coffee because <laughs> there's all these <laughs> ding <laughs> <laughs> They see literally every, every day. Comes <laughs> and says, I think people are putting soap in my coffee. And it's not just like no, this no, funny little not. comment. She talks about it for like 10 minutes. She can't get over it. And then I we walk start in, I walk in every morning and I go, there's a lot of bubbles in the coffee today. I think people are washing it out and they're leaving soap in it. I had the same thing where I was like, I was kind of rude one day on accident. I was in a hurry and I was feeling kind of like frustrated with a barista at Starbucks um, who's already kind of like, kind of weird and uh and i got to work and i was like i think he poisoned my coffee <laughs> <laughs> i read that and i was like that is just hilarious who thinks that <laughs> so many bubbles. with the people There's that so they work bubbles. with <laughs> okay so uh, what do we have two one for stacy now yeah uh two, round, end of round four here jake uh, so uh, yeah. jake, uh i have a one of you want, yours do you want to drop like, a hint yeah i'll drop a hint jake uh one of yours is uh i have a a, a a TV related thing yes. and a food related thing in there for you. And a music related thing. And a music related thing. Okay. Uh, food. Um, she has said that I have been known to grab food like I'm. You're a, already. You're already wrong. I'm already wrong. Okay. Uh, is it. Uh, Wait, grab food like what? You don't get multiple guesses. So. Okay. All right. Well, so we're going I'm, down I'm to the wrong. final I'm round. Wrong. It's 2 1, Stacey. This is for the win, Stacey. No more hints. Oh, no hints? Okay. Something that Jake said about me. That I'll, I'll, I'll try my... to give you a hint. I'll try to give you a hint. Okay. Um, uh, actually, that's, that's hard to give hints for this one. Let's see here. Uh, you know what? No, because because I think this is going to give it away. So I can't really give you hints on these ones. Okay, okay, okay. Just go, go for it because you're up to one. Okay, so something that people wouldn't know about me. I'm assuming it's not anything super nice. <laughs> um oh man I'm what about really when it comes to true crime is it no, like i'm it, really what about something oh. that comes with like you know with the, with the languages of the world i don't know that's a bad hint but oh um is it italian what about that no that's the not it of, oh. that wasn't it. it the one i was languages going after the world the, the one that i was going after is that you have a terrible british accent not really language related <laughs> but i didn't want to give you a, the hint but... so oh, and, now, and now and now because of I that don't. we're gonna have to hear it right now go ahead give us a little snippet I was doing a little British schoolboy today. <laughs> it's so bad. She did. She's doing that live on the radio. On the <laughs> yeah. Someone was like, "Stacy, can you read the whole segment in this oh accent?" And I was God. like, "Can you read the whole segment in this accent?" Yeah. That's not. Yeah. So that's bad. not even it's, remotely close to being British. Horrific. It's so bad. Uh, okay, last round, Jake. Governor. Uh, let's, let's, I got two hints for you, Jake. Because uh, you know, a tie tie will give to then you both t-shirts, right? But um, all right, perfect. <laughs> uh, music, you're you're a fan of somebody's music that nobody Justin knows. Bieber. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Jake is a Justin Bieber fan. Yeah. Believe it or not. Yes. Because um, I actually that's I, his guy. I actually I uh, can't believe that at all because he's, I think I mean as a Canadian musician I just don't think he's terrible I think he's terrible like it's just you think he's terrible <laughs> I just um his last album's not bad the way he's changed his kind of like personality to like kind of well I do agree with that I he's kind of like that. acting yeah. more like I guess I don't know what to call it just uh, trying to appropriate hip hop culture more maybe but 
Yeah. Um, Amer- America can have them. America yes, can have that's them. how we, we feel. Me and <laughs> Jake would love that. Wait, I do don't know about them? all that, but uh, <laughs> anyways, that. anyways, do we get to know the rest? Oh yeah. So I'll just, I'll just go ahead and read the list. So this is what Stacy said about Jake and uh, some of these you're going to repeat here. Uh, you're a Justin Bieber fan. You hate salsa, which is very Not weird. True. I've evolved. I've changed my opinion. It oh, so you like on salsa, salsa now. Okay. Yes, it, it depends on the salsa now. The, the counterfeit parking pass uh, suspension. Yeah. Um, you, you're a big fan of love is blind and the bachelor. Yes. But you, pretend, but you pretend to not like reality TV. Well, those are the only two reality TV shows that I watch. Okay. I don't he makes fun of me too. regularly for watching a lot of reality TV. I think The Bachelor is the worst thing that ever hit TV, by the way. So I would rather watch Jersey Shore reruns than watch The Bachelor. Well, <laughs> love Jersey Shore. That's fantastic. I got roped into it because yeah. my because my wife watches it. She loves it. And then as I watched it or as I tried to be like, oh, I don't like it, I found myself being really into it. And then it was no turning back. So um, my, my, my mom but, is into it like, like deeply into it and my sister and my mom would be like watching it and be like tj you should come watch and see how these men act i'm like what fake <laughs> no jay will like talk to you about it like i'll come into the office into the studio and he'll be like i mean you think it's going to be kevin Kevin S. <laughs> and the last one was you got to hang out with drew Brees. Yes, but I'm, I yes. question that, Stacy. How do how do how does he not talk about that? You're saying nobody knows about that. That doesn't make that any one sense. was me pandering to you. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> but okay, but also that much. is true. That is true. Jake, you hung out with him on more than one occasion, right? Because you yeah. went to a baseball game with him, but then you also were like training with him. Yeah, went to a Padres game, and then this off season, Drew came and hung out with us Drew. while uh, Russ and I were were training, and uh, it was it was awesome, man. I mean, Drew is my old, he is my like. There's a there's a pantheon of quarterbacks for me, and Drew Brees is like, he's at the he's top up there. Of it. So he's know. the reason well, I Jake, became uh, a, a well, like I, I became a fan of Drew Brees bef- when he was with the Chargers, and then yeah. I just followed him to the Saints, and that's why I'm a Saints fan now. But you know what's I funny? All, I think that's all the time we have for today. With Listen, that <laughs> it's it's funny how things are coming full circle because there's another quarterback that might bring me back to the Chargers. And he's a similar yes. type of gunslinger. It's Justin Herbert. I love yeah. the way he plays, and I might, yeah. I might have to follow him now. But uh, what's with it? With, with uh, Jake on Stacy, it was. Uh, she thinks that people are putting soap in her coffee. Said that already. She believes. Yeah. That, she believes she's the most popular person in any situation she walks into. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Terrible Facts. British accent. Facts um, only. If she doesn't Facts know this, this was a compliment. If she doesn't know something in depth, she studies like crazy to make sure she's got it down. Oh, that's nice. That's Tremendous good. work ethic. Nice. And then uh, the punishing yourself with horrifically healthy food. So yes. Um, yeah. Either, either way, thank you guys so much for this episode. You know, I really enjoy talking to you, Jake and uh, Stacey. We always enjoy your presence. You're you're a hoot. Um, that's a Canadian expression, by the way. <laughs> hoot nap. <laughs> we'll have She's to do this again. Try to do it in America now. And it's, hey, there it's you go. go well. But we're gonna have to try to do this again after Russell Wilson is traded from Seattle. So uh, uh, <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, I'm kidding. Uh, I might be waiting a couple years, but you, you got it. We'll be back. We'll be all back. right. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for listening. Thank you, Jake Heaps. Thank you, Stacey Joe Russ, and good night. <laughs>